It's uh, the France 24 debate and roll out the tanks for Brazil's bicentennial four weeks before he stands for re-election. Incumbent President Jair Bolsonaro opting for a decidedly martial tone to celebrate the uh, 200th anniversary of a South American giant that's uh, experienced well, plenty of ups and downs in the 36 years since the generals made way for a return to democracy. Uh, the military parade's a mainstay. It's, uh, the, the martial aspect has been highlighted, though. Uh, it's a show of pride for, sh uh, or is it, just, uh, is it just a show of pride or a foreshadowing of what the former army captain may try if, as polls predicts, Bolsonaro loses out to former President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva. Already, Bolsonaro has borrowed from the Trump playbook, refusing to say whether he'll accept the results and also taking aim at the Electoral Commission. What's next for Brazil's democracy? How much has Bolsonaro left his mark on Brazil, on its institutions, the economy, and the Amazon, where he's gone all in with agro-industry and bulldozing the world's largest rainforest? As Joe Biden struggles to roll back his predecessor's populist legacy, what about the next president of Brazil? All the Americas watching this race, uh, Brazil, a nation that so often serves as a bellwether of changing political winds throughout the region. Today in the France 24 debate, we're uh, asking about Brazil's democracy, just how under pressure is it with us? Uh, uh, joining us uh, will be from the northern uh, city of, uh, we're expecting, for, of Fortezela, Haitor Freire, member of the lower house of uh, Brazil's Congress from the right-wing Inau Brazil Party. From Campinas in Sao Paulo State, we welcome economics professor Pedro Rossi, uh, who's on a panel that advises Lula's campaign team. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, Marcia Camargos is member of Alerte France Brésil, an activist uh, group uh, uh, based here in Paris. Alerte France Brésil, MD18. What does the MD18 stand It's for? a movement uh, of uh, democracy which was created uh, uh, during the... A coalition of grassroots movements. Yes, yes. All right, thanks for joining us. He's a former Brazil correspondent, David Gormazano, senior editor at France24.com. How are you? Good evening, Francois. I'm very well. The uh, France 24 debate where you can join the conversation you have on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24debate. Uh, Jair Bolsonaro earlier branding this a battle between good and evil. That was at a rally in the capital, a rally that followed uh, the kickoff to the day, a military parade on this Brazil's 200th anniversary, and it feels as though it's more about the election to come than the two centuries past uh, this Wednesday. Brian Quinn has more. In Brasilia, President Jair Bolsonaro arrived Wednesday morning for a massive military parade aimed at celebrating the 200th anniversary of Brazil's independence from Portugal. But many worry that what should be a day of national unity is being turned into a divisive campaign event. The far-right nationalist Bolsonaro is locked in a bitter fight to save his job as he faces off against leftist former President Lula da Silva in next month's election. Trailing in the polls, Bolsonaro has turned to the playbook of his American role model Donald Trump, attacking the integrity of Brazil's election system and signaling that he may reject any result other than victory. He's also leaning heavily on his affinity for military authority and his association with evangelical religious figures, a move analysts say could backfire. I don't think they'll help uh, in what he really has to do, which is appeal to the independent voter and those voters who have been turned off by his authoritarian, often racist, uh, homophobic rhetoric. But it won't help in that, but it will consolidate his base, it will be a show of support, and it may threaten some people. After the parade in the capital, the president has called for a massive rally on Rio de Janeiro's Copacabana Beach, with thousands of his motorcycle-mounted supporters expected to show up. Many are concerned about the possibility of violence, and there is precedent. Last year, Bolsonaro supporters attempted to storm the Supreme Court during Independence Day festivities in an outburst inspired by Trump supporters' January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol. David Gormazano, uh, this rally in uh, Rio, uh, how important is it for Bolsonaro? It is important because it's, uh, he's, in, he's uh, running his campaign. And uh, although it is the bicentenary, it's uh, another opportunity for him to, to rally his base. And um, the last opinion polls are not so negative for him because uh, 
six months back, he was 22, 23, 24% high in the, uh, in the polls. And the, the most recent ones show 35 to 38% of support among uh, Brazilian voters. So it seems like uh, campaigning the way he does is, is working out. 25 days to go. Uh, Pedro Rossi, can he close the gap? Well, I don't think so. I, I think Bolsonaro is in a very difficult situation. He's not strong enough to make a coup, and uh, he, he doesn't know if he moderates the discourse so he can expand his voters, that it's what he needs for the election. But on the other side, his base just wants more of this radical discourse that he's, he tries to make every, everywhere or in every situation where he has his crowds and his uh, radical base. So he, he's in a difficult situation. Maybe he, he can, could get the election for the second round, but, but it's very difficult to win this election, and it's very difficult to um, to make a coup in Brazil like uh, he, he wants. M make a coup in Brazil, he has said that the army is with us, but does that mean he wants to stage a coup? He, he, mean it, he means it. Every, I mean, every situation he, he, he can, he, he means that he, he wants to, to, to govern otherwise than with the, the, the institutions that we have. He, he's always challenging the institutions of the, especially the, the the Supreme Court. So what he wants, it's a coup. It, that there's not other idea that it's possible to 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 put in his head. That that's what he wants. Now, we, of course, he, he could get win the election, but this is not possible for him too. All right. Well, we're now pleased to join from Fortezella Hightower Freire, Congressman, uh, uh, who who joins us now. Uh, do you believe that uh, w when Bolsonaro talks about the army being with us, when he says he's not sure he's going to uh, um, accept the result uh, uh, of the election yet, uh, commit to accepting the result, does he really want to stage a coup? No, that information is not true. Unfortunately, uh, the left party, the extremist uh, left party, they always... Um, selling a Brazil that um, are not true. Uh, if Bolsonaro wanted a uh, coup, he, he he would have done right on the beginning of his um, of his initial uh, the first year of his initial ma mandate as a president, and he, he didn't do that. Uh, I'm in the Congress today as a congressman. I'm not on the same party as Bolsonaro. My party, we are running a race at this time. Uh, the, the the party that I'm uh, today on has uh, a president. We are with a a, a Senate uh, a woman um, a Senate called Soraya. She's a candidate uh, for the presidency. So I'm not here defending Bolsonaro. I'm I'm here speaking about the truth. And Bolsonaro never wanted a coup. If he wanted a coup, he he would have done it before. But I've lived in other countries. I've studied in England. I've been in the U.S. In all other countries, they've, every uh, citizen and, and re representative um, are proud of his army, of his history. Uh, today we are um, celebrating our bicent bi bicentenary, and uh, we have no this rally normally as we have every year. When Lula was president, was the same thing. When Dilma was president, was the same thing. So it's just because it's Bolsonaro, they are making all of this uh, fake alarm. This is not true. So we have this this uh, army rallies every year. We are proud of our army. Um, and if he wanted to do anything, he would have done it before. He uh, respects democracy. Actually, in Brazil today, we have three institutions. We have the executive, we as in the uh, in the Congress, and we have the uh, Supreme Court. And we see a, dict uh, a dictatorship from the Supreme Court. We approve things in the Congress, and they go there and, and revoke those, those um, laws that we legally approve. 
we we go to the normal process. So um, I'm not defending Bolsonaro. I'm just. So are you saying you don't honest. you don't you don't recognize the uh, the legitimacy of the Supreme Court? I do recognize the legitimacy of the Supreme Court. However, there is not a balance between the powers today. We see that clearly. We in our Congress approved just approved a a, uh, um, a salary um, for the uh, um, uh, for the, the the health um, for the health uh, some some of our category in the health. And the Supreme Court went there this and 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 we vote just just. Uh, uh, just did everything against what we approved. So um, there, there is not a balance, a respect between the institutions today. But um, throw everything on Bolsonaro, say that he wanted a coup, he doesn't respect, uh, sell um, something that is not true. In 2018, mm. when he was elected president, he started with 1%. In, in in the in, in the in the polls and he uh, and he and he, and he won the election. Run. What is certain, and we saw it today uh, at the uh, military parade that took place earlier. The parade, as you rightly say, takes place every year. Um, this year, though, uh, there were some notable absentees, including uh, the presiding justice at the Superior Electoral uh, Court, uh, Alexandre de Morris, who's been the target of a lot of criticism from the incumbent president. He insists that uh, when push comes to shove, he won't blink. Oh, the intervention of the Supreme Electoral Tribunal will be minimum, as I said before. However, it will be quick, steady and implacable to suppress abusive practices or release of false or fraudulent news. Principalmente, mainly those hidden in the cowardly anonymity of social media, the famous fake news. As famosas fake news. The cowardly anonymity uh, of social media, quite, quite outspoken language for a judge. Uh, uh, Marcia Camargos, how are Brazil's institutions? You heard Haitor Freire saying, you know, you have the checks and balances between the executive, the legislative and the judiciary today. How is Brazil? Well, uh, the problem is that uh, Bolsonaro is against the Supreme Court. But actually, the Supreme Court, if they had done their uh, task long ago, they should have uh, prevented him from uh, going on because he is a threat. He has always wanted a coup. He's against democracy, but now he's in a much more delicate position because um, Lula is ahead of him. And uh, in the previous election, they just uh, put Lula into jail in order to take him out of the uh, election so that he himself uh, could be elected. He was but convicted so, on corruption charges. No, but it was all uh, fake news as well. Uh, all the, the people, they were bought. And there was the Judge Moro who was awarded with the uh, Ministry of Justice because of all he did for Bolsonaro. And uh, it's so much so that Lula has been cleared of all his accusations. And that's why he was able to present himself. And now Bolsonaro is very afraid because if he loses, he, he's going to jail. He himself and all, all his family, I know, uh, don't know if you heard about all the scandals, uh, one after the other, but for instance, they've bought uh, his, uh, one of his sons, bought uh, 50, 51 uh, huge uh, houses, cash. Who does it? <laughs> and nobody says anything. They made a scandal when, when Lula visited an apartment he never really bought, and uh, it's uh, corrupt and so on. And nowadays, Bolsonaro is very afraid because he knows that he is going to jail once he uh, loses the election. And on the other hand, it would be a good thing that Lula won in the first round uh, because it would prevent us a lot of problems. Uh, Bolsonaro will not accept the result, as he said already. He will not accept the result of the elections. He's against democracy, and he'll do all in his power to prevent uh, things going on uh, uh, legally. He's uh, like a Trump. 
with the difference that our institutions yeah. are not as strong as in the United States. David Gormazano, uh, the, the uh, election five years ago, there was a, a, a lot of disillusion on both sides. There were cor corruption scandals, both with the left and the right. How is the tone different this time? Things are different. Well, th there's quite a lot of worries at the moment because there's a climate of violence. There, the, the, there has been fights. There's, there's tensions. There are the, the words that the two candidates used. The, the first debate between Bolsonaro and Lula, there's a climate of confrontation. There's a, con there's a climate of, of clash. It's not, if you think back of a few years ago when you had a, a candidate from the Tucanos, the, the centre-right party of, of Brazil, who won two presidential mandates, and the PT of uh, the Workers' Party of, of, of Lula, it was a completely different atmosphere. It was uh, political adversaries uh, debating, sometimes with scandals and everything, but there's not this permanent uh, atmosphere of violence that uh, has uh, existed under and can that, can that, can Bolsonaro that, uh, presidency. Okay, because it's always the question, and it's the same question we ask in the United States with uh, when we look at the politics there. Uh, do you try to broaden your coalition, or do you just try to energize your base and, well, maybe even turn off the others from going to vote? Apparently, the 70% of Brazilians have made the, their choice. They will vote either for Bolsonaro, either for, for Lula. And among those 70 percent, no one is going to change sides. People who have decided to vote Bolsonaro will never vote for Lula. And the reverse is, uh, is correct as well. So to appeal to those 30 percent left who will make the decision, uh, I don't see Bolsonaro softening his language or he's not, he, it's, it's not him. I mean, Bolsonaro is a radical. Bolsonaro won in 2018 because he became the spokesperson for Brazil that we don't know very well here in Europe, but that exists. A Brazil that's in evangelical temples, a Brazil that works in, uh, in, in the countryside with the, with the agro-business industry, a country where you have an obsession with guns because there is a lot of uh, insecurity and there's a, lot a lot of crime. There's a lot of crime. Bolsonaro talked to these people. Bolsonaro has the language of these people. That's how, that's his, that his, that's his DNA. He's not, I don't think he's going to change. He's not going to turn into a, a moderate conservative politician overnight. And because anyway, no one's going to believe that. All right, you, you mentioned uh, the, the sort of the, the cultural divide uh, that exists uh, in Brazil. And you mentioned uh, of the, the courting of the evangelical vote, both candidates uh, trying to appeal uh, to that with the incumbent employing, I guess you could call it anti-woke rhetoric, the kind that's gone global. Our government will never support the legalization of drugs. Our government will never support abortion. Our government will never support gender ideology. Our government is pro-family. Our government asks for loyalty from its people. And we will do what has to be done. The biggest lie President Jair Bolsonaro tells every day is invoking Jesus' name all the time. Many of you here may be evangelical. You know in his eyes that he is lying. He is lying. He uses Jesus' name in vain to fool the good faith of Christian men and women of this country. Pedro Rossi, have you seen Lula perhaps change a little bit in uh, his tone when it comes to these kinds of... Uh, of social issues, uh, cultural issues. This is uh, the, uh, the this the president, uh, the former president, who uh, uh, himself uh, 
Uh, many have said that uh, the fact that he got married to his partner was a nod to the evangelicals. So you, you, your thought on this? No, I think it, uh, President Lula is someone that came from the people and has this value that are very strong with him, the religion. I don't, I don't think he has to change the way he thinks about it and the way he speaks about those things. Uh, uh, I have to say something. When we, we, we say that we are living a dictatorship of the Supreme Court, it's a way to challenge democracy. It's a way to, to challenge the institutions. And it's exactly what Bolsonaro is doing. It's not the same thing. What we see today is something completely different. Bolsonaro is using the institutions for the electoral purpose. Uh, people in Brazil can't go to this parade. Like oh, it, the, the, it's a, a national event, so everyone should go there. What people are saying here is that because the, because of the political violence, only Bolsonaro support supporters are going to this parade. So it's something completely different. Uh, Bolsonaro is dividing the population. But anyway, I think, and I'm an optimist in this way, because someone that is saying this, uh, is seeing the, uh, this program, must say, well, Brazil is a complete mess. But actually, I'm an optimist. I, I think people, people will get things right. I think we can have an, an election to get out with Bolsonaro of the Brazilian political scenario and get back to some kind of uh, a normal institutional arrangement. Do Donald Trump went kicking and screaming. We've heard Jair Bolsonaro refuse to say whether he would accept the result if he lost. Uh, Pedro Rossi, uh, you, you think that in the end, um, democracy would carry the day? Yes, I think in the end, democracy will win and Bolsonaro will, will do the same thing as Trump did. But he's not strong enough to stay and to, to, to make the coup. And so he will have to respond for his act. And, and he's not strong, strong enough. Hopefully, democracy can, can have a victory this year in Brazil. Haitor Freire, what were your thoughts when you saw the events of January 6th, the 2021 unfold in the United States? Were there lessons to be learned for Brazil? Of yeah. course, always there are lessons that are to be learned. Uh, we do not defend what happened in the U.S., um, I believe that those people that caused, uh, they should be, um, they are actually being uh, responsible for, the, for their acts. And we have the same lesson here in Brazil. Democracy will be respected. We defend democracy and we also defend freedom in Brazil. Uh, our president has said uh, that he will accept uh, whatever the result is, he will accept. But uh, but uh, in the context that he said that he will not accept, he said all the things that are not are not uh, um, connected. Um, basically, as um, with his acceptance between the population, wherever we, he goes, he's always welcomed. And when he was saying that, he was oh. We, we will not accept if we win, but he was not saying that he will challenge the institutions. Democracy and freedom will be respected in Brazil. And both candidates, they are basically uh, um, equal on the election polls now. And there are um, uh, one quarter of the Brazilian uh, people that will decide which side. But when I hear uh, Lula speaking, I hear uh, an extremist uh, is speaking. He's really extremist. And those institutions that are presenting the numbers for the election polls, they they were really bad on their numbers on 2018 and 2020. Um, we had we have concrete cases that they they had 60 percent for one uh, governor and 30 percent for for the other, and the 30 percent won um, with a, a big difference. So um, democracy will be respected. We are on running on a race, election race. Obviously, each one has his, his speech. Um, as I said, my party has um, a, a president, a candidate of a president, which is a, 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 a current Senate 
a member, Soraya, in which I will vote on her, uh, but I will not accept this extremist speaking. So, um, speeches actually. Uh, but I, I can I can secure the vote the the, the, the French or Europeans or uh, who are listening uh, that democracy and freedom will be respected. Brazil is a strong country. Um, unfortunately, we have some problems as every country has, but we have a strong agro business. We have a people that loves to work. Um, and we will always fight for democracy and for our freedom. All right. The front page of a uh, broadsheet newspaper, Fola de Sao Paulo, this uh, Wednesday, illustrating what well, you could say the double facet of this uh, 200th uh, Independence Day for Brazil. Top of the fold, uh, the reopening after nine years of renovation of Sao Paulo's famed Ipiranga History Museum. It was built near where legend has it. Emperor Pedro I declared Brazil's independence. And below the fold, the headline, Bolsonaro turns September 7th into a campaign event and provokes the STF, the Federal uh, Supreme Court. So there you see uh, the division. F for you, uh, Marcia Camargaos, what does this 200th birthday mean? Well, it, it doesn't mean anything special um, unless, it, if you think that uh, today, uh, Bolsonaro sort of uh, kidnapped our uh, national um, uh, day. Kidnapped because, the national yes, day? Yes, yes, because he's trying to turn it to, into uh, sort of uh, something for his campaign. For, for He called all uh, his supporters, and mainly to Rio de Janeiro, because he is from Rio de Janeiro, and then he is going to, to be there. And, um, He's staging a campaign rally. It's 25 days till the election. How is that ca kidnapping the day? Well, that, that's it. He, he called his supporters to, to go there. And the other parties, they cannot go to the streets because they, uh, they want to avoid a confrontation. And, um, well, uh, nowadays, uh, it, it, the things in Brazil, like uh, our independence, it was always something like, like the upper class with the government that uh, make decisions and impose that to the people. That's what happened with the independence. So much so that the constitution, the liberal constitution of uh, 1834, is still kept the black slavery, because we are the last country in the world that um, um, finished with the black slavery in 1888. Uh, so Bolsonaro, he is using this moment to uh, uh, project himself and to call all his supporters and uh, sort of uh, uh, make a show of uh, strength to threaten uh, democracy uh, because he is really afraid of losing the elections. All right, a lot more to talk about on this issue of uh, how the campaign is run, but let's also talk a little bit about uh, where Brazil is going. And this concerns, obviously, the whole, the whole region. Uh, Brazil is the big player in South America. Uh, and also the whole world, you might even argue. Four months of drought have firefighters battling wildfires uh, this uh, Wednesday around the capital. But this amidst, amid the biggest surge in 12 years in the number of blazes in the Brazilian Amazon. David Gormazano, we, we, you heard there um, uh, Hector Freire uh, mention how Brazil is a great democracy uh, with a strong economy. And he paid the, he, with a nod to the agro business, um, that issue of uh, agro-industry and what role it plays now and will play whoever the next president is, is, is a crucial one, not just for Brazil. Well, right now, what the, uh, the agro-business is, is worried. Well, in the last four years, there's been massive fires at this time of the year because it's the end of the dry season. And that's when you traditionally uh, burn parts of the forest to gain new land. And... In the last four years, the, the agro-business has done whatever it wanted because the supervising body uh, has been weakened a lot by the Bolsonaro administration. So maybe this year is the last opportunity for cattle ranchers, for farmers, to expand the, the, the land they can, uh, they can use for, uh, for their business. 
And uh, so I expect this fire season to be very intense. So you're saying these are man-made fires to clear land uh, in a wildcat fashion? It's, it's been the case for decades. The thing is, you, you, either you can regulate them or you don't. And in the last four years, the choice made by the federal government is to give a free hand to many people in the Amazon basin to, do, to burn whatever quantity of land they want for uh, their business. Heitor Ferrer, you agree? Heitor Ferrer, do you agree? No, I, um, I see the, uh, our agribusiness as a strong, um, as a strong mm -hmm. side of the view, independent of uh, who will be the president, um, these jobs, and, and they will continue feeding not only Brazil, but we actually uh, feed partial, uh, a good part of the world. And um, Brazil has lots of strong areas that um, has to be developed. Um, sometimes I, I keep a little bit sad how are selling Brazil, that is actually the, the, not the truth what they are selling Brazil. We are a strong economy. Uh, we have a, a democracy that we've got our problems. Every country has got its problem. I've been in 30 countries. I've studied and worked um, as a, a financial professional in, uh, in Europe and also in the US, and I saw, I see that every country has got its own problems. We have our problems in Brazil, but, but we the, are- The criticism, the criticism that, uh, that uh, David Gormazano is, is pointing out that it's been reported on is that in the case of Brazil, uh, it's uh, the forestry management, the land management has been, uh, has, has not happened over the last uh, four years, and that, uh, the cutting down the of, the, of the forest has been unbridled and uh, without, a, without any kind of a, a planning and preparation. No, no, it's actually not true. When you, when you, we cannot control Mother Nature. What we will say about tsunamis and other things that happen. Brazil suffered with dry, uh, dry. When, when you see the met meteorologists speaking, we have, we've suffered the last uh, dry uh, um, years. So um, Mother Nature, uh, obviously, as we are in government, uh, we, we need to plan. Yes, I do accept that our government should plan for these uh, years, but we have indeed plan, uh, planned uh, and we've been resolving what has happened. But it's like the same as COVID. We suffered in COVID. We were not expecting that to happen. The same thing these dry years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we have managed and we will keep and, 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 and secure our Amazon and our nature here. And, um, but unfortunately, other things, Mother Nature didn't help, so. Pedro Rossi, do you blame uh, Mother Nature for uh, what's happening in the Amazon with these wildfires? Absolutely not. I think the, the deforestation in, in the Amazon forest is a direct result of this deregulation policy and this, this liberalization of mining and agribusiness. So it's a, a direct result of the government and it's, it's, it's possible to take care of the forests of the Amazon. If we look at the past, the, the Lula's government and Dilma's government, they reduced the, the, the deforestation in a, a large scale. So it's very possible to care about the, the forest, the, the environmental and what, the government is doing is, is just not caring about the Amazon the forest. Show. Back on the cam, uh, back in May, uh, Lula tweeting uh, that the people will go back to eating a picanha, that's a popular uh, uh, beef cut, uh, uh, and have their barbecue again. Uh, some environmentalists are saying what he's promising on the campaign trail is uh, the, that uh, there'll be more uh, cattle ranching, not less. Uh, what's your, what do you say to that, Pedro Rossi? I think the president used this kind of metaphor. And he always said that Brazil is one of the largest food producers in the world. And we have dozens of millions of people starving. So this is a contradiction that can be solved with, with politics. 
So it's not incompatible to feed people and to have a strong uh, agribusiness. You have to regulate. You have to, to put things in their places. That's the way to do things. But what we are seeing now, it's a, direct, a completely deregulation of the use of the lands, of the indigenous people's lands, and of uh, the mining and of the Amazon forest. Uh, in uh, th there's another aspect to this is that there's been a lot of violence in the Amazon, David Gormazano, in Marano State. Uh, a couple of days ago, the report of the murder of rainforest activist Janildo Oliveira Gajajara, reportedly shot dead in the early hours of Saturday near the indigenous territory where he lived, the sixth member of uh, the so-called Guardians of the Forest to be murdered since 2016. Um, it's It's brutal. Yeah, the the Amazon is a is a very brutal place. Uh, it's been the case for a long time, but again, it's what the government is um, is sort of turning a blind eye about what's going on there. L regional, local powers, local forces fear less of the intervention of federal agencies, of um, outsiders of the Amazon world interfering with their business. We did hear... I think that's the... In the last years, that's what has happened. We did hear uh, pledges by Brazil's president at the latest COP summit that uh, Brazil will be uh, a partner in trying to preserve the, the rainforest, Marcia Camargos. It's just fake news because he never did anything in, in that... Uh, um, in that uh, way, and it's not only a blind eye, as you said, I think he really encourages uh, people uh, to occupy those areas. He doesn't do his job. He dismisses uh, all his um, employees uh, that uh, denounce what is going on in Amazon, and that's uh, very important for the international community to be aware of uh, what Bolsonaro is doing and not do business with the Bolsonaro government because he uh, really encourages this, this type of thing. So, um, and also Bolsonaro, he's not, um, we talked about it, that uh, he has the support of the army. He doesn't have the support of the army itself. He has the support of a party, a military party. Ten of his ministers are uh, from uh, the military uh, environment. And um, also, what is a great problem with Bolsonaro is he's, he's supported by the militia, the organized crime, and they have heavy weapons. By organized crime? By, even by organized crime. And that's the, the most dangerous thing, because they have very, very uh, um, important weapons. And um, now he, he's just it's liberated. The, the selling of uh, arms and uh, people are getting armed. And that's very, very dangerous. Haitor Ferry, during this first mandate, uh, the president uh, embracing a gun culture. Uh, should it be the case for the next one, whoever the president is? Well, uh, guns, are, uh, guns are defended in other countries, and we are not releasing guns, selling guns in, in uh, supermarkets or in... Um, in any uh, place, or, or it's not everyone that can have access to guns. Um, I'm on. I believe that freedom should um, give, as the same as in the U.S., should uh, a citizen, a good citizen, should have a means to defend um, his uh, uh, his person, his family, and his own house and, and or farm, um, but. Guns have always been a, a part of our culture here. Uh, unfortunately, the guns that are not legally registered, those guns are involved in crimes, but legalized guns, they are not involved. The cases are really, really small um, because there is a bureaucracy, um, criminal and, uh, antecedents that have to be proved. Um, so, but yes, the debate should always be in, in between our population, and our population should decide if it wants or not. Not as happened in 2000, and the population decided 
that we wanted to continue with our guns, uh, but it was not respected by Lula. So even though the population said that wanted to continue with our um, uh, same guns laws, Lula went and cut it. And what happened? The crimes with illegal guns um, increased. Hatiferi, I know you have to leave us early, so I want to thank you so much for being with us here in the France 24 debate. Pedro Rossi, your, your reaction, though, to that point and uh, to what can be done to uh, reduce the level of violence in Brazil? Yes, I, I think there is enough evidence, scientific evidence, that uh, to put guns in people's hands is not a good thing to do. So this is absolutely the, the wrong way to, to put things. That is, that is, there is one thing that I think it's important to put, that in Brazil we have um, this electronic vote. And what the, the actual president, Bolsonaro, is saying that is that he doesn't accept the electronic vote. He's, he, he would accept an election with the paper vote. So this is a violence against them, our democracy. This is the point we are. So what we hope that happens in Brazil the next week is that we have a peaceful election and things can go well again in Brazil without this uh, challenging of democracy that we are used to with this president. And why is the gap narrowing in the polls? Actually, it's not narrowing uh, in every polls. Uh, th there is a, an effect of this economic measures that Bolsonaro took, that he, he actually gave money to people in the last month, people that were, were without money, totally without money in, the, in the, the pandemic. Now they, they have this, this kind of uh, transferring program that Bolsonaro made. That it, he, he went for one or two, three percent in the last weeks, but the, the last pools just put them stable. So the, the scenario now, it's very difficult for Bolsonaro. And Pedro Rossi, let me ask you, because you heard David Garbanzano earlier talking about the fact that 70 percent uh, of the voters, according to those surveys, has already made up its mind. Who do you target in the remaining 30 percent? Can How do you get more votes at this point? Yes, it's very it's very difficult to, to have more votes for for Lula and for Bolsonaro. There is one candidate that was a, a left candidate in the past. That is Ciro Gomes. He has kind of eight percent of votes, and there is a targeting in his electors, in, in his voters, that uh, they could go for Lula more than Bolsonaro. So he could decide the election in the first round if those voters goes to Lula. But if this doesn't happen, we, we may have a second round. And I think it's very difficult for Bolsonaro and Lula may, may win kind of easily. So, David Gormazano, October 2nd is the first round. It's afterwards that we have to look out for. There will be four long weeks before the second round. And it's then that it could get very, very even more tense than it is now. And I think what will be watched very, very closely... Is that the case every time? That it's tense between the, the two rounds of a presidential election? Like this, no. Like, this, this, is this, is, this is unprecedented. Lula versus Bolsonaro. It's, uh, yeah. it's a clash of, of, of culture. It's, uh, and there's a, the, the history of the four or five last years make, make this moment very different from from other episodes of the Brazilian political life. And what could be, what I'm, I, I'm very, I will, this, what the army, the role the army will play, wants to play, in uh, uh, when the, the, the results will be announced of, of, of the second round, is to be watched very closely. Because the army has been saying, some generals have been saying, that they will judge if the election is fair, which is not a constitutional power the army has. It's the army who is, who is very strong in Jair Bolsonaro's government, who have many, there are many military men that have been um, nominated in public uh, companies, in public bodies. Um, they don't want to leave uh, their positions. And some generals are saying, we will say if this election is fair. So 
if we are in a case where the result is tight, we'll have to watch very closely what the, the army will, how the army will act and what the army will say, because this is unprecedented. It's the first election since Brazil is back in democracy that the army is, is back in the game. That's an unprecedented. Most important election well. since 1985, you say. We'll have to leave it there. David Gormazano, I want to thank you uh, so much. I want to thank Pedro Rossi for being with us uh, from Campinas. Uh, Marcel Camargos, thank you for being with us here. More coverage of the build-up to Brazil's presidential election on our website, france24.com.